I look back at when I was going through my struggles and I felt like, you know, it was unacceptable to be doubting yourself that way. A lot of athletes are kind of outwardly confident and you think that's what like everyone's like. And um, I just remember getting dropped from Otago and um, I was just so relieved that I didn't have to go out and play anymore. Like it was sort of like the nightmare was over. And, um, you know, you're a failed sportsman or whatever, but at least you can kind of walk away from the game and, and not have to deal with it anymore. And, um, I sort of didn't realize how badly it had become until, you know, you, you see the other side of the coin when you, you start getting in a good mental space again and, and you look back and you go, how was I ever thinking these things about myself? And, um, yeah, look, I think it, it's, it's a massive thing. I, I try and, um, now I'm, I'm not old, but I'm, I'm a senior player and, and a lot of the, I suppose, domestic teams as well, especially that I play in. And, um, I really just try and now talk to a lot of the youngsters about life balance and, um, and enjoying, you know, their lives outside of cricket and, and enjoying themselves outside of cricket and, and realizing that when you go home at the end of the day, you know, you know, it's not a value on you as a person, whether you scored 150 or a duck or top five for or whatever, you know, there's, a lot of other stuff going on and um i really do just try and embrace that now when i go out onto the field every time is you know think about how good it is just to to play a game for a living and and try and enjoy it and try and have a bit of a laugh with the lads and and if i get runs or wickets um then that's sort of a bonus yeah liam you're, you're nodding away there obviously um picking up on those points is is it the same over in england now do you feel like uh, young players is more encouraged and uh, to to be able to talk about those sort of things, which don't always come really natural to to athletes, and I suppose particularly male athletes. I think yeah, I mean when I first started on an Ashes trip when Marcus Juskothic had his problems, I wasn't even aware that was a thing. I was I was young and naive, and I never thought I think if you're an athlete or in that space, then you probably should you, you would never have their mental problems or anxieties and stuff, and that sort of opened. The gate for me it didn't come to me till later on down in my career but trez sort of came out and spoke public publicly uh so when i did have my problems with anxiety and stuff trez was one of the first people i spoke to uh, and, and i think yeah as jimmy said is it's so important I, I know a massive difference driving to the ground and just hoping i get through the game with a half decent performance to when you're in a good space thinking how you can help win a game uh it's a huge difference uh and as I said, I was going to bed thinking I was going to bowl four wise in, in a test game and I, I would stress about it. And when I did get dropped, I felt exactly the same thing. It was a relief to think that like, I don't have to go and perform and I'm not in sort of, I'm not enjoying it. Like the pressure of turning up to play and just the thought of failing over and over again and not being as good as what I thought I was going to be. It, it, yeah, you put that on yourself. But it, you think it's quite hard to talk to because people are like, oh, just be quiet. You're playing for England. Like what are you, what are you talking about? It's not even a big issue. Uh, but it was only later on down the line that I did speak to people and I think absolutely you should be one of the first members of staff involved in a team uh, after the World Cup I know it's a different obviously in terms of winning and stuff but I found it hard I found it really tough I had massive bouts of anxiety trying to play a T20 game for Surrey after the World Cup it's the first time I sort of stepped onto the pitch and it felt like I was in the cloud maybe because of the expectation that people think he just won a World Cup he's going to come in and absolutely tear this T20 up uh, and, it, and it took, I broke my thumb the, the game after and I had maybe three weeks out. I went to the States to see my wife and then I did a uh, sort of debrief uh, with a lady called Andrea who does the sports psych from Surrey. And I just wrote down what was good, what was bad, how can I improve all them sort of little bits. And that sort of helped me move on to the next stage. So that sort of clearing my head, uh, speaking to someone about it. And I, and I believe now is you're practicing your netting to improve your cricket and why not do the same in terms of your, your your brain as well you're training that mind you're training to, to deal with situations and it's something i swear by in terms of like the meditation and just giving yourself that mindfulness and it's helped my game massively yeah i suppose jimmy it's going to also be as simple as just uh asking your mate how he is you know not just how his cricket is oh yeah it's a difficult one isn't it i think um there's not a lot it's hard it's hard to explain but there's not i don't think there's a whole lot you can do for someone who's not ready to develop themselves like that i look back and plenty of times people sort of sit me down and go matt are you going all right like what's going on and um i was so sort of stubborn and bullheaded that i just go yeah no nah, no worries mate like it's all good i'm just not scoring runs and you know it'll be sweet and but i think in the back of my mind i was um 
yeah, like it's hard to explain what I was going through, but I was going through a, almost an obsessive kind of training regime and working regime where I never gave myself any kind of slack um, with any kind of error. And, you know, I'd sort of have a next session and I'd bat for 45 minutes and I'd hit 95% of the balls absolutely crunch out of the middle and I'd walk out of the net furious because I, you know, mishit a couple of cover drives or, or something, you know, and um, when you never give yourself that break, um, you just fatigue yourself and, um, you know, yeah, I, I'd play games of cricket and I'd come out and, and bat beautifully in a full day and um, I'd get to 20 batting like play session 10 dolker and, you know, I'd kind of miss hit one off drive and then, you know, in my mind I'd be thinking, oh, you're so crap, how did you not hit that for four? And then the next one I'd play a miss and then eventually, you know, three balls later I'd be sitting in the pavilion and I'd be going, I was batting fine, you know, everything was going fine. I just literally got myself out with my own mind. And um, once you can sort of admit that that's what's happening, um, you can actually start to move forward and, and create coping mechanisms and techniques to, to get yourself through it. And, and now I actually laugh. Um, it's something that a lot of people have said to me. They say, you're always on the field kind of smiling and laughing. And um, I actually laugh now when I play a, a terrible shot or bowl a terrible ball that uh, how funny it is that someone that's this crap can be playing international cricket and, and earning a living playing a game. And it sort of has become a humorous point for me that I, you know, have a laugh about it and move on. And, um, yeah, it's, it's sort of a helpful part for me, but obviously everyone's different. And just lastly on that, Liam, do you, do you think the fact that you guys are professional athletes and you are judged on your performance by the public and, and the fans who potentially don't get a chance to meet you, does that kind of buy into that kind of um, those feelings of your own worth and trying to adjust to um, all those sort of thoughts and feelings? Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of keyboard warriors, right? And if you, even if you read the media and stuff like that, you can easily sort of get swayed away to think that you're not very good, you're, you're not great, but people have to write stuff. That's what uh, how they provide a living. Uh, but yeah, I think my main sort of switch was uh, try and sort of turn a negative into positive or like Jimmy did if he laughs on the field because he knows that's what happened and he's come through a journey to get to a point and it doesn't just happen overnight I mean I'm sure from the from where you thought you're absolute crap and stuff and you got yourself out I mean you didn't just switch overnight to the day after to laughing at that ball it takes time and it takes the practice a bit like as I say cricket in your net and you get better by practice uh, but you can see how people especially in the bigger sport with the media now, people do get down on themselves. And if people don't get in the right space and get the help that's needed, uh, you can see how people dwindle off and then go out of cricket or go out of sports. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was turned sort of a negative into a positive and just sort of believe yourself. But it, it did take time in it. Uh, and obviously with time, you perform and you just take a small bit from that performance. I all well in that that day and then you take that positive on to the next game and you keep picking up the positives and to get a win and that's what you sort of do just small steps that lead to a bigger picture